Responsive Form Designer is a cool front-end development app that gives you full control over the style and placement of form elements. Today, I'm going to teach you how to create this form design that offers the user visual choices instead of plain checkboxes. Let's get started. First, I'm going to start with a blank design. The project will automatically include a form container element to which your project elements will be tied to. You'll notice this in the element tree on the element pane. This container serves as the main wrapper for the form. I'm going to apply the class name subscription form to this container. On the styles pane, I set the following configurations. Under Design Background Section, select New Gradient. I selected a linear gradient background at 130 degrees, and I used a pink and purple. Uh, the, the purple color I'm going to go ahead and set as um, the hex 9261FF, and for my pink, F287D1. And I don't want it transparent, so I'm going to bring that alpha value up. I always like to set a background color as well as a fallback, just in case there is a browser that does not support the linear gradient. Um, so I'm going to use my little color picker right here and grab that, that purplish pink color off the canvas. Next, scroll down to the border section to set a border radius. I'm going to put 5 pixels for both the Y and X axis to slightly round out the corners of my form. Now I'm ready to configure the size of the form under the layout section. The max width for the entire form, I'm going to make it 560 pixels. So let me find that max width setting. That means the form will be no bigger than 560 pixels. And for a height, I'm going to make it a minimum of 100 pixels. For some breathing room uh, for the elements themselves, I'm going to add a uh, 40 pixel top and bottom padding and 50 pixels left and right padding. Along with that, I'm going to do 10 pixels on top and on the bottom of the margin. And to center the form, I'm going to choose the auto control for both the left and right margins. Lastly, to give the form some depth, I'm going to put a shadow. Um, so under design, um, I'm going to choose new box shadow. I'm going to set the X and Y and the spread all to zero. This way it's just a very soft um, background shadow. Great! Now the form is ready for some content. As you can see in the example, there is a short block of text at the top um, indicating the user to sign up for the newsletter. So that's what we're going to build first. So from the content pane, scroll to the uh, text and images section and drag and drop a paragraph element onto the canvas. On the styles pane, give the paragraph the class name intro paragraph before applying your styles. Still on um, the styles pane, I'm going to scroll to the design section and set my typography. Um, I'm going to be using the Roboto font with the fallback Arial pretty much um, for all of my text elements. Uh, I'm going to leave the 15 pixels for the font size and make it a nice dark gray color. Um, for the text itself so it's easy to read. 
And last but not least, I'm going to align it center. Next in the layout section, um, under the dimensions, I'm going to set a max width for this paragraph as um, no bigger than 390 pixels. To space it out um, a bit, I'm going to go ahead and um, add the auto left and right margin so that it's nice and in the center. And I'm going to um, put some bottom margin, uh, about 30 pixels is probably best. It'll help set it apart from those check boxes we're about to add. Now to actually edit that placeholder text, if you just right click and choose edit text, you can then um, type your, your words right onto the screen. In my case, I already had it saved to my clipboard. Okay, now we are ready to add the visual choice options for the user to select their preference. Uh, so from the content pane, uh, click the checkbox div in the form element section. By default, a container holding the text label that says check options along with three label container elements will pop onto the canvas. So with the main container selected, I'm going to the Styles pane and give it a class name Visual Choices. Now the um, text label really serves as like a heading for your form field. We don't need that, so I'm just going to click the little trash can and delete it. And by default, the element does come with three checkbox fields. So using my element tree, I'm going to select one of those label container elements. You'll notice they in include all of the elements to that make up the specific feature, um, including the checked and unchecked um, stat, uh, state. So I'm going to select one and go ahead and delete it. We only need two in this case. Now to move these check boxes in line on the styles pane under layout, I'm going to choose display flex and set the justify content to space between. Boom. Now they're nice and apart. So with one of the label containers selected, we can go ahead and um, start uh, styling how we want the, the checkbox to look. As usual, we're going to give it a uh, class name, in this case, choice. Go over to the design pane and under the background section, select Add new image and check the resource for local image to import our images from my local machine. I'm going to go ahead and select both images now um, since I know I'm going to use both and start by selecting the mobile image first and, and importing that into the checkbox one. Now in the background um, configurations, I'm going to change my horizontal position to center and size to cover. Next up under the layout section, I'm going to change the uh, width to 48%, 48% wide with a max width of 220 pixels with a minimum height of 220 pixels as well. And for some spacing, I'm gonna do 25 across the board for left, right, top and bottom padding. 
Last up, I'm going to change the display to flex and justify content to center. I love using flex for my positioning. It makes things so much easier. Now under the design pane, I love my shadows. So again, I'm going to add a new box shadow and set um, zero for the X axis, five for the Y and negative five for the spread. The base styles are in place. So to apply that to our second checkbox so that it, it duplicates the styles, all I need to do is select it and reuse my choice class name. And this way, all of the configurations will be duplicated. Now with these in place, let's do a hover state. If we change the in state to hover, now any styles we make will only apply when the user is hovering over. I'll start by changing that shadow, make it a little more um, uh, clearer. So I'll do um, a five in the X axis, a 10 in the Y, and I'm gonna leave that negative five spread. And I'm going to also add a bottom border. If I click on the little underline on, on the border selection, we'll activate it. I'm gonna give it four pixels and make it a solid line. And to give it some color, I'm gonna give it a nice blue. Finally, let's add some effect. In the effects section under the 2D, 3D functions, I'm gonna set the translate Y axis to negative eight pixels. This will allow them to pop up just a little bit. If we scroll up to transitions, oops, I added a new one accidentally. We've already got one right here. We can configure all properties. And if I choose apply to, and then I can select that translate that I just configured, the transform scale rotate and make it um, 0.2 seconds. If we click that preview icon in the toolbar up top, we can preview how it's going to look right on the canvas. And you can see how when you hover over, it makes a nice little um, effect. Since both visual options, the checkboxes, share the choice class name, to change the image of the second option, we're going to give it a second class name. In this case, choice two seems nice and clear. Now the styles apply will only affect this individual element. So if we go back down to the background element um, and click on the mobile image, we can change it using the little pencil and now select the wearables um, graphic. Now to swap the placement of the checkbox and label itself, go to the layout pane and adjust the flex align properties for content and items to flex end, and you'll see it move to the bottom. Now let's tweak the checkbox labels. Um, if you select one of the text elements and give it the class name choice label, we can give the second one the same class as well and then they'll share um, the styles. So on the design pane, I'm gonna set my typography, again, um, using the Roboto and Arial fallback. Um, I'm gonna do a, a font weight light of 300 with 15 pixel size and uh, a light gray color, 606060. Under the layout section, I'm gonna apply five pixels to both left and right padding. Great, now select that second checkbox label and give it that same class name, choice label and you'll see the same styles be applied automatically. 
Last thing to do here, if we double click on the canvas, we can change um, the checkbox label um, text itself, making it smartphones and also wearables. All right, we are moving right along here. The next section in the form is the Agree to Term section along with a Submit button. From the content pane, we're going to start by adding a container. And this container is going to hold the check plus text field and a submit element. Apply the class name Terms Container to that first um, container div. Then I'm going to drop in a check plus text field element um, into that div. With the terms container selected, I'm going to the style layout section and I'm going to change display flex, allow it to wrap, and adjust, adjust the justify content to space between with the items centered. Finally, click to add a submit button to the group as well. Let's go ahead and select that container again so we can add a bit more styles. If we scroll down, we can get some margin, about 30 top. Space that out a bit from the, from the checkbox options. Double click on the screen to change the checkbox label to read. I've read and agreed to the terms of use. Always remember to um, add in a class name too. So let me put in terms and then change my text here. With the class name, now I can go ahead and adjust those typography. Again, using the Roboto with the fallback of Arial. The font size is gonna be a little smaller. I'm gonna just do a 13 pixels with a light color gray is probably 393939. Okay, let's do four, let's do 14 picks. That's a little better. Okay. Last thing we're gonna modify is the submit button. It already has a uh, basic class, so I can go ahead and just start styling. I'm going to use my same font, the Roboto and Arial. I'm going to make the weight um, a bit light, 300. And I'm going to transform that text so that it's all capitals. And to make it a little easier on the eyes, I'm going to make the letter spacing um, one pixel. Ah, my mouse went haywire. Let's try that again. One pixel. There we go. Finally, let's change that, that default blue color. I'm going to make it a pinkish color, pinkish red. And... I hate pointy corners, so the border radius um, five for both the X and Y axis rounds it out just nicely for me. Finally, in the layout section, I'm gonna adjust the size of the button itself. I have chosen to use 1.5 EMs for both the top and bottom padding. Oh. Actually, that's kind of big. Let's undo, undo, and do that for the left and right. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Finally, I'm going to add one REMs uh, of top margin to space it out just a little bit more from those visual choices. Now hover state, if we scroll up and change the in state to hover, 
under the design pane. I'm going to make that background color just slightly darker. This way upon hover, it kind of lights up for the, for the person who would be clicking on the button. Cool. Let's check it out in preview mode. So if we preview on the canvas, we can see the nice hover effect. But when you click on it, it does not actually work. You would have to preview in the browser to be able to click the actual checkboxes. So if we do the preview on, I'm going to go ahead and choose my Google Chrome. We can see exactly what it's going to look like. We've got the nice hover effect on the submit button, both options pop up and you can click and unclick all of the checkboxes. This really scratches the surface of what Form Designer can do. I mean, you can modify how you want those checkboxes to actually appear if you want them to have a different kind of symbol or color or, um, you know, you can go crazy. As you can see here, you can, the items stack when they, um, on for smaller screens. Um, you can even control error messages. So if you wanted to have a special uh, message, let's say if someone did not agree to the terms, you can come over to the element tree and you can actually modify how you want the error message to read. And that about does it. Um, whenever you export the form, it'll generate your embed code for you. Um, and then you can embed it into your website and hook in your own processing scripts. Thanks for joining me today.